last summer break. A time for leisure. So I forgot, didn't you? So apparently, Gravity Falls has an unaired pilot. Alex didn't really want to release it, but of course, no matter what it is, people will want to see something if you unrelease it. So during a cipher hunt, if you want more information, just watch the video. The people found a puzzle. The puzzle was 2,000 pieces and took multiple people a while to build it. Like, a long while. Like, due to people correctly guessing the next location, the entire hunt for the cipher statue finished and the puzzle still wasn't. But eventually Alex said if the puzzle was finished, he'll release the pilot. Eventually it was, and two days after, he gave us a code, and you put this code into the mysteryofgravityfalls.com, you got the pilot. It has since been uploaded just on YouTube. Like the vast majority of shows, the pilot is just a kind of alternate original cut of the first episode, Taurus Trap. So you can definitely see a lot of parallels between the actual finished episode and the pilot. So in that regard, you could just watch my video about Taurus Trap and just apply it to the pilot. Of course, there's some notable things. Going by Jason Ritter in the commentary for Taurus Trap, supposedly he never re-recorded the opening scream. Unless you're me. <laughs> Even in its original art style, Dipper and Mabel look incredibly similar. Except Dipper now wears his iconic blue hat for the pilot, and he doesn't have his vest. Their unseen parents still send them to Gravity Falls to stay with their grunkle Stan. Stan looks both noticeably different and kind of similar. He has more prominent eyebrows and head hair, and his underwear is red instead of blue. Apparently, this original design would later inspire the mare. The Mystery Shack itself looks very similar, but noticeably different. Such as the roof being oddly purple, there's an open neon sign, more signs in general around the shack. The side entrance is now on the front of the shack, or the shack itself is just kind of mirrored as we know it. The totem pole is in a different place and looks completely different. There's now a snack bar that's in a tree. The chimney is now in front of the shack. There's a loudspeaker up front and there's antlers above the gift shop door. Even the room is similar but different. Like the window now being way bigger. They kept the bed colors and the pictures above them. The carpet's different. They even have that one bell above Mabel's bed for some reason that it's actually used in this the most important character, the Sasquatch. It's now a different pose and has a different fur color. There's this whole additional scene about eating icicles, and they have funny gags on them. Dipper references that one weird fishing trip, which will later be used into Gobblewonker. There's a gag where Mabel has a crush on the guy on the $10 bill, aka Alexander Hamilton, which is hilarious because this is way before the musical. This is a gag that will later be reused in Love God. Even the mattress keen is here, but he's downgraded to just Prince. Grampers, along with its oddly live-action grandpa head on it, is a reference to hampers and the pens. So canonically, at least for the pilot and presumably the actual show, Grunkle Stan wears adult diapers. The stove is in the chimney. We still have the plot with Norman. You can tell that Bill Cipher wasn't really conceptualized at this stage because the window is not pyramid-shaped. And even weirder, the journal is now instead Dr. Crackpot's Book of the Damned. Which is hilarious, the idea that it would have said damned in the kids show. But also bizarre because of how important the journals are to the series that they didn't have the idea about them early on. The zombie page looks very similar. And now it's in German or something. Bambi Lamp. The montage with Mabel with Norman is said to in the summertime. By Mongo Jerry, should have been the Zeke and Luther one. They still have the gag of the gnomes, wait, zombie. We also see this drawing of the Jersey Devil be reused several times in the book. Like right next to the gnomes, the undead, and now it's on the other side of the undead. And you can also tell they only have a few pages drawn, so if you slow them down, you see them reuse this moth, something, and the Jersey Devil. And they get to the undead, it flashes the gnomes, then back to the undead, hilariously. Hoo -hoo! Hoo -hoo! Dude, Alex Hirsch voiced Hootie a decade early. Hoot hoot! Password please! Ah! You can see the sass crotch in the background here. So I guess like the mystery shack allowed everyone to just walk around the living area to the shack. Dipper is given the golf cart keys by Stan rather than Zeus. 
I'm used to Wendy getting sidelined, but it's weird that Zeus didn't exist in the pilot. Dipper accidentally backs over one of those lawn jockey statues, and the theme here of all things is taken from the movie Galaxy Quest. Starring Alan Rickman, Sigourney Reaver, and Tim Allen, Galaxy Quest has a Star Trek kind of show within the universe, it's just a show, but it gets misinterpreted by a bunch of aliens who think it's real life, and they try to recruit the cast of the show to help them fight evil aliens. I like that originally the gnomes all had different facial hair, they weren't just all clones minus the main guy and Shmebulok. But we still get the gnome chasing minus them all forming up, unlike in the opening. But then it suddenly gets different. Oh, enough! My queen! The time has come to fulfill your destiny! Obviously Justin Roiland plays the gnome king, which is kinda weird given what has been revealed about him. Step back, man! You're old! The only way to free Mabel is to answer a riddle. Which calls back to earlier, what is a ghost's favorite ice cream flavor? And a reference to cereal and the gnome's toe in the stone. Now with a new statue, they awkward sibling hug. Stan's chair is now orange, he still has the dino skull even if it's on the wrong side. And then they play the Nightmare on Elm Street song even though they think he's a zombie. We see a pterodactyl flying by, which will later be used in Land Before Swine, and the song being played here is the gorillas to Bing. There's also a demo of the pilot, which has a few alternate shots. Uh, next time on, which was never intended to actually be something, just like a photo reel sort of, of Dipper and Mabel walking around town. We meet the bat stab biker before he was censored, so he's just a stab biker. I think this is Tyler Q. Biker in the background. A map of the town with a lot of locations that won't be used in the show. A nest of unicats. And I'm guessing this is the closest thing to a pilot Wendy. Sort of, not really, playing Ouija with Dipper. And then there's a whatever the hell this is where we see something grab a cow. Dipper and Mabel chilling at the lake and they get attacked by a two-headed dragon thing. Dipper being sucked into the outhouse. I guess pilot agents, pilot Gideon's dad, and Lil Trump. Oddly, a pilot equivalent to not what he seems. Dipper and Mabel going over Niagara Falls and then Green grabbed at by a giant hand. And one of the things were released before all this cipher hunt stuff was Dipper and Mabel interacting with the Shining Twins and proving they don't have any twin telepathy. All this dating back to 2010 or 11, a year or two before the show was released. That was 10 years ago. Maple outfit check. Rather than wearing her iconic shooting star, she has a pink sweater with a flower on it, with a reddish pink headband and skirt. We can also see her wearing it in the next time on thing, so I guess they didn't think of the gag of every episode they have a different sweater. But we do have the meow whoa sweater. Other than the pilot having a hyper realistic cat photo on it, it's basically the same thing, especially in the far shot, it looks exactly the same as the actual show. But overall, this pilot is pretty good. It's overall a retread of Taurus Trap, but like all pilots, it's pretty interesting seeing the differences from the actual show, seeing what stayed the same and what has been developed on. Especially in a show like Gravity Falls, where it was clear they didn't really know what they were doing. I do like this OG art style. It's a little weird seeing the live action stuff, but overall I kind of like it. For some reason it kind of reminds me of like advertisements you would see at a tourist place to promote their place to kids. Overall it's a little rough, but I think it's pretty fun seeing where this iconic series started. So if you're interested, I think it's definitely a good time watching. And yes, I'll get around to talking about Lost Legends eventually. Remember to like, share, comment, and if you're new here, subscribe.